the welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers are the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook, and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Through over the years, I have been gifted so many beautiful cookbooks from really really old old cookbooks to even recent cookbooks and I'm just gonna make it my goal to start going through all of these cookbooks that I've been blessed with and cooking out of them for y'all I'm going to cook through my books through my cookbooks. This was a cookbook that was given to me by a very, very dear sister friend from Kentucky. She knows how much I love Tasha Tudor. She loves her just as much as I do, probably. If you don't know Tasha Tudor, please research her. Read about her. She was a very quiet, talented, just beautiful lady that made anything around her beautiful. And she sent me, my friend sent me this cookbook. And I had looked at this cookbook and, and always wanted it. But this is the beginning of her cookbook. It says a charming cookbook featuring Tasha Tudor's recipes and illustrations. World-renowned artist Tasha Tudor charmed and fascinated fans with her sweet illustrations and simple lifestyle. This cookbook echoes the cultural and family narrative so accurately and beautifully reflected in Tasha Tudor's art and life. The receipts, which she called recipes, also suggest Tasha's philosophy in all things in moderation. She would say, then with a laugh, she'd say, except gardening. Tasha's grocery list was never very long. Kind of like mine. My grocery list is never very long. She had a robust vegetable garden, a large chest freezer, and a well-stocked larder. She created countless meals over many decades, and they were all very good. When possible, Tasha purchased fresh food, the origin and method of production of which she knew. But if she couldn't or didn't want to, she didn't worry. Frugality was on her shopping list as well. These receipts, from applesauce cake to beef stew, lentil soup and chocolate pudding, have been the mainstay of Tasha's family for generations and are, for the most part, from the original cookbook she began as a young woman. The simple, comforting, and delicious receipts are accompanied by her beautiful watercolors and new photographs of the food in Tasha's homestead. I have several books of Tasha Tudor's, but I didn't have this cookbook, so I just really appreciate this cookbook. So I'm going to go through it, and we're going to be making recip Tasha's recipes. And then from that, I'm going to move on to different cookbooks that were gifted to me. This is Tasha's, whoops, 
This is Tasha's apple dumplings. That's a picture of her apple dumplings and her recipe. If you want to take a, a still shot of that, that's her recipe for apple dumplings. It says apple dumplings make good breakfast. They are also an excellent dessert served with vanilla ice cream. Sometimes when Tasha made apple pie, she'd also make extra pie crust dough and wrap apples in five inch squares. It's hard to make too many. The sugar and water mixture will thicken by the time the dumplings are done and may be scooped from the baking dish and poured over each dumpling as it sits on a dessert plate. So, guess what? I even have some ice cream. So, all in moderation, like Tasha says. We don't eat this very much, but we're going to tonight. We need to make our, our dumpling, our crust, our, our biscuit dough, what the apples will go inside of to make that dumpling. Now, there's a really uh, easy recipe of making apple dumplings, and that's with crescent rolls. But this recipe is your old-fashioned apple dumplings, and she had a really, really good recipe for it. Tasha Tudor's apple dumplings. She calls for two cups of all-purpose flour, and we need two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Those of y'all that don't know much about Tasha Tudor, I hope that y'all research and read her stories, and there's so many, um, even on YouTube, there's a lot of um, things about Tasha Tudor, and there's even a couple of um, films about her. You won't catch her talking much, but people just filmed her and her everyday life and her beautiful um, gardens that she took care of and, and loved so much. So you can check that out. Two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And a half a teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to take about two-thirds cup of uh, shortening. I'm using some lard. A lot of people, when they think about apple dumplings, especially in different parts of the world, you use a whole apple. I'm just going to be using uh, little sections of apples because I like my dumplings little. I don't want one in big one of the big huge whole apple dumplings that's not <laughs> that wasn't her recipe and that's not how i always made them but uh you can make them however you want you can use this recipe and use a you know whole apples but i'm doing exactly how she done it and how i always made them too and you can't you know, as high as, unless you're really blessed to have an apple orchard, apples are not cheap. So, you know, you can't be too picky about, you know, oh, well, that's not a baking apple or something. When I buy apples anymore, I buy the kind that we like to eat just just for a snack or with peanut butter or something like that. Um, and then I just use them to cook with. I don't really get picky whether if they're, Granny Smith or, you know, anything like that. I just, I use what I've got. And it always turns out, so. Now, we love fried apples. And used to, back in the day, we had family that had the old-fashioned June apple trees and stuff like that. And we always had apples. And, uh, but I don't know. Fruit trees in our area anymore just don't do very good. Uh, why? We really don't know. If It's just, it's either diseases or the weather or something constantly overtaking the fruit trees. So my Instapot is going in the background, if you hear it. And that's a whole nother video. <laughs> 
So we got our lard in there. If you don't use lard, but you use shortening, you can use shortening. And we're just going to cut this into our flour. And it calls for a half a cup of milk. And we're just going to stir this up like you're making biscuit dough. And if it don't come together, you can put you a little bit more milk in there. Just about didn't get a big enough bowl again, didn't it? <laughs> I love using my handmade pottery bowls. So I'll try to use them as much as I can. These here, uh, most of them I had bought around Hardy, Arkansas, not too far from where I live. I don't think they sell them there anymore. I think they have moved somewhere else and sell them there, their pottery. I'm just going to bring this dough together. I put me some flour down. I'm not really sure how many dumplings I'm going to get out of this. We'll see. Somebody had asked me about my uh, my marble rolling pin. Um, if it's too heavy for my arthritic hands, and really, I mean, it is it is heavy, but it's not so heavy I can't use it. But I'll tell you what it is, why it's so good. Because it's heavy enough that I don't have to put a lot of pressure. And that's what kills my hands if I've got to push down on something very hard. So, I can't say that uh, all of you would be able, because I know some of y'all have don't have hardly any strength in your hands. I got to that point. I did go to a specialist and they are treating me right now. And um, I can say over the last two weeks, I went from crippling hands that I could not hardly even pick up a pen and write to been able to roll out pie crust and be able to sleep at night with no pain in my hands. Okay, we're just gonna roll this out. We don't have to roll it out too thin. And you can pretty much work with this and get as many as you want. If you wanna do the whole apples, you won't get very many. Or just do like I'm gonna do and just do uh, chunks of apples. So I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to start here. I'm just going to cut like that on those. And that'll kind of give me a starting place. Come back here and get about three out of that. You can hear the tractor in the background, that's Mr. Brown, let's say. Um, let me try three out of this. We'll see where we're going now. They don't have to be perfectly square or anything like that.
Okay, I'm just going to place, you see I just chunked my apples. I think these are either Pink Ladies or Honeycrisp. I can't remember. They're just one of the ones that I like to eat for a snack. So I just cut it in two little chunks. And I'm going to put just a little bit of sugar and cinnamon right here on top. And around it, just like that. And then you just take it and do whatever you want to with it. If you want to make little purses, that's what we used to call them. And just gather them up like a dumpling, just like that. Nothing hard about it. Kids can do this. They would love to do this. Just make sure it's all pinched together. And then I'm going to place it right here. You can take one like this. And just kind of roll it up. And take it to the sides like that. And pinch it. Like I said, they don't have to be pretty. They just, just want them to taste really good. Cinnamon and sugar. Tuck and roll, roll and tuck. You're just making a dumpling. And the flies are still about to do us in. I don't know if anybody else is having this issue. Like I said, you can roll them up any way you choose, or if the kids are doing them, just let them do them any way they want to. Just as long as they're tucked in really good. <laughs> this one's a lot bigger, but that's okay. I'm going to turn my burner on about medium high. I'm going to put in two cups of water. About two cups of brown sugar. Fourth of a cup of butter. And about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now all I'm going to do is let this come up to a boil. Once it comes up to a good boil, we'll turn it off and we'll pour it over our dumplings. Okay, it's come to a good boil. The butter's melted. I'm going to turn it off, and I've got my dumplings back here. I went ahead and put them on a cookie sheet. And you just want to take this good old sauce, syrup, and pour it over your your dumplings. I'm afraid to take the, the whole pot and pour it over them. That's why I'm doing a little bit at a time. I mean, it's quite a bit. 
And this recipe, I ended up getting seven dumplings. That's what I got out of it. I don't think I'm going to need all this sauce. Need a deeper pan, I guess. That's why I put it on a cookie sheet. <laughs> so make sure you get a deep enough pan. And uh, there's the sauce. Woo! And I'm going to put this in the 350 oven for about half an hour or so. We'll see how long it takes. Oh my goodness, y'all. Look at these apple dumplings. And look at this sauce. How it thickened up. Oh my goodness. This is going to be so good. With some good old bluebell ice cream. They turned out wonderful. Tasha Tudors. Recipe for old fashioned apple dumplings. Now, don't these just look larping? Absolutely larping. Okay, we're going to taste it. I got me some ice cream. Got me some of that dumpling on there. Oh my gosh. It has been so long, y'all, since I've had an actual old-fashioned homemade apple dumpling and I'm just going to tell y'all the truth this is absolutely larping as much as I love apple pie I love this even more that apple piece is tender in there if y'all never made these do it it's not hard. And if you haven't made them in a while like I haven't, this is a big, this is just one of them things that you just don't have often. So when you do, it is that much special to you. I don't know how anybody couldn't like an apple dumpling. Especially these homemade ones. There just ain't hardly anything that just even comes close. I hope y'all try this recipe. Mr. Brown gets in here tonight, and he finally settles down and eats him some supper. I'm hoping he's got room. Surely he'll make room for apple dumpling. What do y'all think? If it was left up to me, I'd rather have the apple dumpling than supper. <laughs> y'all have to try this, please. Tasha Tudor's. Apple dumplings. She knew what she was doing. God bless everybody. We love you. I'm going to sit down and enjoy this. My goodness. That crust is wonderful. The sauce is wonderful. Mmm.